Hello everyone. I am doing a VR today to a tag called Tarot Romance Tropes. This is from Sylvie over at Tarot Magpie and I did watch her video and then just a few other VRs. I didn't want to get too caught up in all the VRs uh, and then just fail to make my own, which has happened before. I will of course leave the link to Sylvie's video Actually, I think she even created a playlist. I will leave all the links as well as the prompts for this tag in the description box below. So without further ado, let us get started. The first prompt is the enemies to lovers trope. So this is a deck, style, or system you've insisted just wasn't for you until you realized it was. I feel like a lot of my choices for this VR, they're like gonna be predictable. And I'm trying my best to choose decks that aren't as predictable, but I feel like I've already failed with this one, which is the Everyday Witch. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is the first one that came to mind because yeah, I really started out um, just having a, a strong disdain for this deck actually. <laughs> And, and I know that now I've kind of gained this reputation of really loving this deck and adoring it, but it just it didn't start out that way. I did not understand the appeal of this deck when it first came out. Like it was so popular and I was still at like the beginning of kind of my tarrowing, you know, the, the just figuring out like the decks I liked and um, how to, to read and, you know, and all those things. And this deck kept popping up and I just didn't get it. Like the art style just wasn't my thing. Um, it was just a hard no or so I thought. But I also remember wanting to try like different types of decks, but still like ones that were still beginner friendly, um, which this one seemed to be. And I was watching like a walkthrough and the, the tarot channel, I don't know if it still exists, if it's still up. I know uh, I know that she's no longer making videos, Imogen Walters, but it was her walkthrough that convinced me to give this deck a try because she was like pointing out all the cats, which was like the way to my heart. Um, so yeah, I bought it and I, <sighs> yeah, it totally won me over. It totally won me over. It's visually like, like art wise it's just still not my thing like you know images like this or like the characters portrayed a lot of them seem kind of dopey to me um, but it's just it just reads so well we develop such a close relationship I when I got this deck, I found myself just feeling so drawn to work with it. And even when it came time to use other decks, like newer decks that I might have purchased, I just wanted to keep using this one because it was so much fun, such a great reader. And I just grew such an appreciation for Everyday Witch and like images like this, especially. And no doubt, you know, Elizabeth Alba is a talented artist. There's no doubt about that. It's just like this, the art style just wasn't for me, or at least so I thought. But now I just, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> so that is one choice I have, but there was another that did come to mind. And that would be this right here. Or rather, I guess more broadly, um, the traditional pixie artwork. Uh, totally not my thing in the beginning. And I did have the Centennial at one point just as kind of like a reference deck. But just overall in general, I found that this artwork just like did not resonate with me at all. And I didn't think it ever would but turns out it's just about finding the right uh, color palette I guess 
because now that I have this version, which I found on Etsy, I just really love it. I, I love the saturation and the vibrancy of this particular color palette. I love the gloss. Like So all of these elements come together uh, really works. And so now I find myself loving Pixie's artwork as it stands in this deck. <laughs> I'm not sure about... I, I still don't feel called to uh, buy any other clones, but, and this one will do. This one is more than enough. But I think that this is the deck that finally uh, kind of crossed that, that boundary for me, um, crossed that line from being like enemies, like no go for the traditional pixie to, ah, I really love this. I love this a lot. Next trope is the friends to lovers, a deck you used to like well enough, and then one reading deepened or changed your relationship with it. This one was a little difficult, but the, the choice that I came up with is actually the Tarot of Mystical Moments. This deck is lovely, and you know, I got it knowing that um, I got it knowing that I, I really enjoyed the artwork. It's definitely you know my aesthetic, and I did a couple um, specific readings. And there's always one in particular that really comes to mind as being a a a very difficult reading, and yet one that was important. And so I would say that it definitely made me feel like this is a deck that, I mean, it's beautiful, but it has depth to it. And it was able to convey to me just a, a really hard message, a really difficult message, um, and yet done in a way that didn't feel judgmental and... Um, it wasn't judgmental, yet it was direct and straightforward. So I would say that certainly deepened my appreciation for this deck. And actually, I just haven't used this in a hot minute, so I should probably get it back out again sooner than later. The next trope is... Forced Proximity, a deck you used for a month, took on holiday, made yourself work with or for, and it changed your relationship with it. So I'm only going to just show one example, but it's, it's essentially a broader category of Marseille-style decks and Pip decks. So this is the Terra Siren, and I forced myself, forced myself, I mean, you know, I decided that this was going to be kind of my like working study deck for refreshing myself on Marseille. So I kind of did like two rounds of Marseille study. Actually, I'm going to keep these in order. Um, I did two rounds of Marseille study and for the second round, this was the deck that I focused on. And as you can see, I wrote like key uh, words and phrases because I truly meant this to be like a study deck, a reference deck that I can always come back to. So that's why I do like to keep it in order. And I've really enjoyed using this deck in this way for this purpose. And just in general, you know, Pip decks, like Marseille decks, I never would have imagined that they would be for me. But after dedicating myself to learning more about how to use pip decks, um, I have found it to really be expansive. And, and I'm glad that I have that as part of kind of my, you know, tarot toolkit, if you will. And it really does help to, to open up you know, just the breadth of, of meanings that you can give to each card. So I would say that, yeah, Marseille slash Pip decks 
Uh, I mean, I confess that old school Marseille, you know, the traditional style um, is not one that appeals to me even now for the most part, but uh, I do like decks like this. Number four, Soulmates. When it was just meant to be, a deck that you fell in love with immediately. Okay, this is probably going to be predictable. I mean, there were a few that came to mind, but I'm just going to go with this one because it definitely is a soulmate type of deck, and that is Tarot of the Cat People, of course. I mean, I don't know what else I can say about this deck. I feel like a broken record, but I just love everything about it. I love the cats. I love the, the people, like the characters. I love just the, the world building of this deck and just visually how, how interesting and engaging and beautiful this deck is. So, I will always love this deck, always. And this is on like the old school US games cardstock, so it's like nice and bendy and you can shuffle it so easily, like riffle shuffle it. I just love the details of the clothes, just how the cats appear in like these random places on the card and like what that's been to signify like this here, you know, these cat heads with like starbursts are usually meant as, you know, favorable omens or messages, you know, hopeful symbols. So just little things like that just endear me to this deck. Next prompt is the slow burn trope. A deck you didn't have the best first impression of, but the more you worked with it, the more you liked it. And I chose the Hanson Roberts Tarot, which I have talked about this before on my channel. Like when I first got this deck, it was with some other, you know, air quote classic decks, like, you know, the Morgan Greer and the Aquarian Tarot and, um, and then it was this one because I just had never gotten around to working with these more kind of classic, well-known um, RWS decks because, you know, they're just readily available and accessible so you can buy them at any time. So I just never got around to it. And then um, a lovely person uh, sent me these decks on loan so that I could give them a try. And with this one in particular, I would say definitely a slow burn because at first I'm just like, yeah, I don't know about this. Like there are things that really appeal to me, just like the the art style, the illustration, it being like watercolor, like water, I think it's actually not watercolor, colored pencil, colored pencil. Like I found that to be so impressive. Um, like funny things, like, like the proportion like the ratio of like, I don't know how to describe it. It just seems like sometimes a little bit off. So sometimes that was distracting. Sometimes that was like charming. Um, yeah, I just wasn't sure if this was going to be for me. Um, and like, I don't know. Yeah, there's some images definitely were not doing it for me. Uh, I have said before that this deck has a lot of teeth. I feel like a lot of the characters just show a lot of teeth. Um, which now, as I'm flipping through, we don't see any teeth. But I assure you, there are a lot of teeth. <laughs> and that was the thing that bugged me. But like, when I returned this deck, uh, I found that I actually missed it and was like thinking about it. And so I'm glad to actually have a copy of this because it has definitely become like a, a go-to deck that's just really easy to work with. And I, you know, because, see teeth, teeth. Um, because it was a slow burn, I just think it that in itself helped to fortify like a, 
a, a strong relationship, like a solid relationship. Like once we got there, you know, it's pretty stable. So I know this is not everyone's cup of tea, but yeah, I just I really enjoy this deck now. The next prompt is opposites attract. This deck is not your usual style, but you love it anyway. And this is probably going to be predictable AF, but it is my truth, and that is Tao de la Nui. I never thought I would be attracted to this type of artwork. Um, this kind of computer generated, you know, using these like models in cosplay. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just, um, I never thought it would have been my vibe at all. But actually, I just, I really love it. I find it to be so much fun. And there's like a, a kitschiness to it. like, a, And it's hard to talk about decks like this without being seemingly disparaging. Like, I don't want to do that because, um, you know, I love this deck. I adore this deck. But the reason I love it is because it does kind of have that, to me, that kind of kitschy quality that just, it just really delights me. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun. And not only is it fun, it gives, it gives me fantastic readings. So it seems, this seems like maybe for some people it would be like a vapid deck and with not much to offer in terms of depth. And I have found that to be not the case at all with this deck. And it's definitely opened up my kind of visual palette, if you will, to consider other decks like in this sphere, whereas normally I would not have thought I would even consider this type of aesthetic. But this is, I mean, this is still probably one of like the only decks maybe the only deck I have at this point that's this like computer generated style, but I am now definitely open to getting more decks like this. So, I mean, can I still say that this deck is not my style? I don't know. I feel like it's now become my style, at least one aesthetic that I've grown to appreciate. The next prompt is blind date, an impulse by a gift or a deck you got without much research, but ended up really loving. So this deck was in fact a lovely gift and it is the Soul Cats Tarot. And I believe I received this deck when I was still on my bullshit about not really caring for animal decks. You know, just that they didn't work for me and I tried to avoid them. Even though, as I would say that, I probably had a couple animal decks like lurking in my collection. <laughs> and since then, um, certainly like my cat decks have grown for sure. Anyway, uh, so I had probably caught wind of this deck, but didn't really look into it. You know, I just kind of cast it off as like, oh, animal deck, like automatic deterrent, uh, not going to even bother looking into it. Um, even though I love this artist's uh, work, Adam Oler's. Uh, so when I received this deck, I one, it was just so thoughtful. And it's because, you know, um, this lovely friend knew that I was a cat person. So giving it a try, I just found myself really enjoying this deck just it's great it reads really well once again the art is is wonderful like these cats are just i mean you know they're somewhat anthropomorphized and yet um you know they still have their cat qualities but like here this is definitely more anthropomorphized than usually i would go for but i think it it doesn't bother me so much because it's very like this feels very storybook. Like I've, I've found that I don't mind anthropomorphized animals in my deck if they lend to that more storybook Aesop's fable vibe, which I think this art does and these cats do. Um, yeah, so I just really, 
I'm really happy to have this deck. It brings a smile to my face. Cats are just beautifully drawn and rendered and it just, it just the colors, like just everything. It was just an unexpected, pleasant surprise how much I really grew to enjoy this deck. The next prompt is Second Chance, a deck you plan to get rid of that worked its way back into rotation, or a deck that you did move along and ended up repurchasing. So I have talked about this deck several times before, so this is probably another predictable one. But that would be the Sasurai Bito Tarot, or the Sassy Burrito as we lovingly call it. But this was a deck that, when I tried it a few years ago, it was on loan. Uh, and uh, I was eager to try it because I'd heard so much about it. It was definitely making its rounds on tarot tube and and I just I just wasn't sure. Like there were things definitely that appealed to me and then you know other images that really didn't. And so when I first received the deck to try, it just wasn't landing at all. It was not landing at all. And after just a, a few weeks of trying to work with it, I came to the conclusion that it just, yeah, we weren't meant to be. And so I returned it to its owner and I just moved on with life. And then a few years later, it's like I was attracted to it again. I would see it you know, in people's videos or, you know, on Instagram and found myself drawn to it once more. And um, a friend was rehoming this deck and offered it to me and I jumped at the chance. And this time around, we connected. So... I don't know. I guess with some decks, it has to be maybe like just the right time and place, <laughs> the right season. Number nine, unrequited love. You really want to love this deck, but it just doesn't love you back yet? Question mark. Okay, so uh, my choice for this is, let me get this out. It is the Dreaming Way Tarot. So this, I mean, this could even be considered like a, well, I don't know. It, I guess it's a second chance deck in that like I repurchased this one. So I had it the first time around. Like I just wasn't, I never picked it up. Like I never used it. So I decided to like move it along. But then like kind of similar story to the Sassy Burrito. Like I years later would see it again and just really be a call to it. So then I decided, I think one day, I saw that it was on sale. I wanted to buy something. So I decided, why not? Let's give it another try. Um, yeah, I just love the, the aesthetic of this. I love, like, the fashion. Um, I love, you know, just some of these characters are just really beautifully rendered. Like, that's, that's so cool. So I... I've tried to use this again, and it's just, I don't know, we're struggling together. <laughs> we're struggling. And I, and I can't put my finger on why. Like this, this to me is just like so engaging. It's, I love it. I love the costume, I love everything. Like the backdrop, like I just love everything. Um, even something as simple as this. So definitely like art wise, it's totally my cup of tea. I wasn't sure if it's maybe like the somber facial expressions. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't want to play nice with me. I don't, I don't know because I really like it. I really like it. But then when using it, it just um, feels very distanced. So, to be determined, I'm not going to give up on her yet. We're just, we're working through it. Number 10, 
we have the love triangle trope. Two decks that are in competition with each other in your collection or a pair of decks that you always use together. So for this one, I chose two that I, I suppose are in competition though, like, I mean, in theme wise, you can see why I chose these two. So the first one is the beautiful Kriya Tarot. And then in competition with that is the Bana Tarot, or sorry, the traditional Korean, traditional Korea Tarot, traditional Korean Tarot. Um, I don't know, I'm sorry, I, I keep calling it the Bana Tarot because I like that so much better. But anyway, these are the two that are in competition with each other because they are both Korean themed decks. Um, yeah, so stylistically, just in terms of like art, they are different, it's a different vibe. So it's not like, you know, I'm going to be putting one in purgatory, anything like that. These are both keepers. I love them both. Um, but I do, like when I think of one, I do think of the other because these are, these just kind of convey um, this particular era in, in Korean history and just like the humbles and the swords and ah, they're just both awesome. So the beautiful Korea tarot is out of print to my knowledge and you could only get in South Korea anyway. So um, the, tra the traditional Beautiful Korean tradi traditional Korean tarot, but the Bana tarot <laughs> is still uh, available for purchase if you wanted. But see how just the vibes are different. Like this feels just kind of more like I don't know. Like the 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 energy is like more fiery and passionate, you know, and just kind of more in your face. I feel. Whereas I think you know the beautiful Korean tarot is certainly like quieter and more subtle and I want to say like more conservative in its rendering of of the cards and yet both both work beautifully um, and they both read well for me you know and this one is you know especially um, dear to my heart because it was a such a thoughtful gift. I never thought I would have been able to own this deck. Um, so it's just, they're both, yeah. I mean, this feels also like more like manga or manhwa uh, style than this one. So yes, these two are in competition, but both are winners. Okay, so I'm adding one more prompt, and this is one that Kelly Bear uh, added to her VR, and I just recently saw hers, and so and I loved this addition. So I will be adding the illicit lover trope, a deck that you cannot help but be tempted to go back to again and again, or a deck that feels like a saucy little minx. So this would be a deck that I definitely go back to again and again, just in terms of like how many iterations I have of it. And it's certainly a deck that I want to work with all the time. And like when I pull it out, it's hard for me to put it away. Um, again, this is probably predictable if you know me and my channel. But I am talking about the Tarot of the Moon Garden. I have three iterations of this deck. So this is the old school like cardstock. So this is an older edition of the deck. And I think there's, are they still in order? Yeah, this one's still in order. And then I also have this one, which is my, like this was my very first copy that I ever got. So I got this one after the fact. Um, and this one just it's been through a lot, as you can see, because I modified the shit out of this one. You know, at first it started off with me just getting rid of like the white borders. And then I decided to, as you can see, get rid of 
you know, this this border here. Like, I don't know, what are, what are these? They're like vines or like, I'm not sure. <laughs> this like filigree type border. And then, um, yeah, I, I, I decided to kind of make this into this like bookmark shaped deck, which I love actually. But then US Games decided to come out with like a larger reprinting. So I had to buy that too. So that this is the one that's now available from US Games. So as you can see, like the backs are different. It's like purple. And this is completely borderless. So it doesn't have this um, filigree border to it. So I just have yeah, all these different versions <laughs> because I love this deck so much. And yeah, I like that I have options for when the mood hits because I find that I, I love the, like the larger resolution of, you know, this image or this this version where I feel like the colors really pop. I like that it's borderless. Um, but then this one, you know, I, I just love this like smaller bookmark style to it. Like this has more of like a sentimental attachment because it's been with me the longest. But then I love this one because, you know, I do actually like the borders. I like the fact that it's like looking through um, this, this portal into a moon garden like that's the whole point of it that's why it's there so i just love them all and i don't regret having three different copies i realize that's a little ott but that's how i do so this would be my illicit lover deck tarot of a moon garden so that is it for me Thank you so much for hanging out with me if you've stayed with me for this long. And uh, thank you to Sylvie for a fun tag. If you have created a VR of your own, please do let me know um, which social media platform of choice. Um, or, you know, you could always even put uh, some of your answers in the comments below. I would love to see them there too. So... Once again, many thanks, and until the next time, much love and take care.